We now have more Great Western Trail than ever, and it's time now, once and for all, to finally suss out which of these is the best of the West Earn Trail. Best Western Trail. The Western Great Western Trail is what I'm talking about today. <laughs> I feel like I nailed that. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Murphy. I'm one half of the Brothers Murph, and it's time to talk about, indeed, the best of the Western Trail series, the Great Western Trail. Uh, there are now three since the second edition originally came out. They announced that they were going to do three different versions of the game, all set in different locations, uh, and offer new bells and whistles and things to play around with. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to go over a quick kind of the, the great brush strokes of uh, these three games, how they work, how they're kind of different, what each version kind of brings to the table. And then I'm gonna come back here and talk more specifically about like, which one do I think is best? Where should you begin with? Do you need them all? All those fun things uh, will be answered right here for you. Settle in and get you these overviews. And if you're new to us, I'm again, Mike of the Brothers Murray. Please consider subscribing. And if you wanna support us, we have a Patreon. There should be a card flying around somewhere for that and enjoy these overviews. In Great Western Trail, players are running cattle along, uh, you guessed it, trail to Kansas City, making stops along the way to hire employees, build buildings, and acquire cattle. In all versions of Great Western Trail, it's important to diversify the types of cards you have in your hand to gain the highest possible breeding value, so any duplicates of types of cattle won't help much. But there are several buildings along the way you can use to discard cards for money and to build that perfect hand of cards. Other building effects will allow you to get employees such as cowboys who help you gain better cattle cards, carpenters who help build special buildings only you can use, and engineers who help you develop your railway making making deliveries more profitable. When you reach Kansas City, you turn in your hand of cattle, earning money equal to the breeding value. You then remove a disc from your player board and place it on one of the cities along your railroad that you have not delivered to. The higher the value of the city, the better off you'll be. If your train isn't at or past the city you're delivering to, you may have to pay money as a penalty. Along the rails, there are stations you can help develop and possibly send employees to work in in order to gain end game bonus tiles. You will continue rounds with your cattle until the game end, at which time you'll earn points for cattle cards gained, buildings built, your work on the railway, deliveries, objectives, and and more, and the highest score wins. Great Western Trail Argentina takes the core of Great Western Trail in delivering and spices things up by making a variable length trail to Buenos Aires. As you develop your rail, you unlock shortcuts making your path quicker. You now deliver your cattle to ships which are bound for various cities in Europe and the breeding value of your cattle determine which ship you can board. There is also a new thing to consider, food. You must feed your cattle along the long journey and this requires a new resource, grain. There are Grand Harrows which replace hazards in this version and these Grand Harrows will be helped using the strength of your cattle. Cattle now have a breeding value and a strength. Grand Harrows can be helped and collected like hazards or you can actually hire them which makes it possible for you to produce more grain to take higher value trips. Once ships sail to Europe, you can move your discs delivered into different sectors of the city to gain extra points and money. Ships deliver at specific times throughout the game and are replaced by ships that simply give points for delivering even though these ones won't sail onward. Be advised this game might speed up as folks develop their rails and start taking shortcuts so plan accordingly. Great Western Trail New Zealand is the newest title on the line and provides a lot of new avenues to explore. The first notable difference is that you are now delivering sheep instead of cattle. There's also a whole new board where players sail ships rather than use trains to visit neighboring islands and build storehouses which will give you new delivery spaces when you reach Wellington. Sheep can be delivered when reaching Wellington. You will once again want to have a diverse hand of cards for maximum breeding value, but there are also buildings that allow you to shear your sheep and deliver wool. Each sheep has a breeding value as well as a wool value. This version also provides many new features like a new dynamic employee system that bases the price of an employee on how many are currently in the market. The more there are of a type, the cheaper they are to hire. There are also bonus tiles and deck building cards. Bonus tiles have a variety of effects including jokers which can be used as any employee type and deck building cards which can be used to gain money, move up the pathfinder track and more and once used you immediately draw a new card to replace it. These types of cards switch out from game to game as well for added variety. The Pathfinder track gives several boons such as increasing your movement and making it so you won't have to pay money for other people's buildings or hazards, and there's also a new resource gold which you can use to pay for various things in the game including more cards. All three versions share the same core of following a pathway, visiting buildings and making deliveries, but within that, many differences occur to offer a wide variety of strategies and play styles. So that in a nutshell is all three of these games. Of course there is so much more to, uh, to each of these games. Uh, but again, they all share that foundation of going along a trail, uh, you know, moving cattle around and stuff, trying to get that diverse hand of cards. It always comes down to you want as many different colors of cards as possible. They all share that uh, just in different locations and sometimes with different animals and things. Uh, so I'm going to kind of go through bullet points of... Uh, categories for these games, uh, things that I've kind of thought about as each of them has come out uh, and to get my thoughts. 
I think this is an A+. Uh, something like this I think is really cool, something we haven't seen much of, uh, where there's a series of games like, uh, you know, I did a, a comparison of the, the West Kingdom trilogy from Garfield Games, and now they're in the South Tigris. They're doing these games, but each of those games is very different from each other. They're kind of set in the same time and general area, but game to game will be very different from each other. This is really riffing on Great Western Trail. It never strays too far from the foundation of Great Western Trail. I'd say 70% or more of each of these games is still just Great Western Trail. Uh, but within that, there's a lot of exploration that's happened, a lot of uh, cool changes to mechanisms, uh, new things to consider, cards being used in the same way but different ways, all sorts of stuff. I think they've done such a good job, uh, uh, Alexander Pfister, on giving you really substantive stuff to chew on with each new version of the game. These are not simply like reskins where now we're in Argentina and stuff is in Spanish, but everything else is the same. It's like, no, there are major changes <laughs> to this version of the game. New Zealand gets really different, uh, but each of them gives you something new to think about uh, and beautiful new settings. Uh, uh, which I think is super duper cool. So the fact that they have managed to toe that line of not simply re-theming, re-skinning the, the theme of the game, but everything else is the same, and also not going super far so every game is completely different, I think this they hit a sweet spot here that's really, really fascinating and interesting where there's this in anticipation with each new version that came out because I'm like, what are they going to do? Especially with Argentina, we didn't know what was going to change, if it was going to be completely different, 100% the same, and then when we, what we got is what we got, and that made me so excited for New Zealand because like, okay, if they did this kind of stuff with Argentina, you know they got to step it up, and I feel like they did. Uh, so overall in the series, I think it's just so cool, A++. If you're a fan of Great Western Trail, <laughs> I, I will say that as a general caveat, this whole thing uh, for me I really enjoy because I love Great Western Trail so much. Without that foundation of appreciation and enjoyment of the original game, uh, you know, who knows if we would have gotten to these other ones. So we'll talk a little bit more about like should you get all these and stuff in a moment, but overall I think it's really cool and they didn't just take the cheap thing of like new art, new cards, but also the same cards, same stuff. Um, I think it's pretty cool. That's a tough question. Which of these three games is the most different? Or I guess maybe I'll say, what is the most different from Great Western Trail, the original? So which of these two? And it's a toss up because they're both really different in different ways, but I think I'm gonna go Great Western Trail Argentina as the most different. This one uh, feels different because, maybe because it was the first time it gave us cards that now had the breeding value and the strength of that cattle. There's no hazards in this one. There's just the Grand Heroes, which you can hire or essentially help and, and collect them like you would a hazard in the original Great Western Trail, but you're using those cards and the strength that is provided from that cattle uh, to kind of tame the land, as it were. So I think that's really cool. I also think the fact that the rail that you develop can shorten the path significantly. If you get that thing all the way developed, you can get around and jump right to Buenos Aires very fast. So that kind of not having a predestined length of, <laughs> of the trail, um, I think is really, really interesting. And then the deliveries, about delivering onto ships. So your breeding value and the amount of grain you have determines which ship you can board onto and the timing of when those ships sail off to Europe and then when you get your disc into those cities, develop, you know, uh, building up enough grain so that when you do a future delivery, you can also move one of your discs into a different section of the city to gain money and points and things like that. So that kind of like two-step delayed delivery system is just really, really neat. And in New Zealand, it follows a more standard you know, you deliver your discs and then they're kind of there forever. Now there is wool you can deliver and stuff, so that's very different than the original. Uh, and it, it, it kind of, for me, this one borrows a little bit of like rails from the north, the expansion for the original Great Western Trail, uh, where you have this kind of upper board where you can make deliveries and stuff. So it's not necessarily new because we saw that in the expansion for the original Great Western Trail. Things in Argentina for me felt the most brand new. Um, and yeah, so that's, I, I guess I, I gotta give it, I'm going different, purely different. It's gonna be Great Western Trail Argentina.
So which game is the most game? Which one's the biggest? Which one's the baddest? Which one's gonna be ultimately the hardest to get into? It's gonna be this one right here, Great Western Trail New Zealand. There is so much stuff. There is so, so much stuff in this game. This one blew us away when we first heard the announcement and then got into the game and the rule book and stuff of like how many just things there are to collect, to gather, manipulate, use. Uh, there's so much more than either of these two games. Uh, in this game, you have like deck building cards, which just give you like a little one-time thing and then it goes to your discard pile and you draw a new card. So you don't even like clog up your hand. That is brand new, a card that is not a cattle or objective card. Uh, there's sheep, first of all, that's very different. Uh, there is those bonus cards. There's bonus tiles, which can give you the ability to like, I'm gonna trash uh, one of my two cards and get this Romney as three value cards. So something like that, which is just a bonus tile that you get as a one-time effect, but it's not one of like the Harbor Master tiles, like those station tiles from the other two. Uh, that gives you like an end game scoring. It's just this thing, or you can clear a hazard for cheaper, or you can get a bonus worker, a wild type of worker that can get slotted in anywhere. There's all those things to consider on top of like the normal getting employees, <laughs> of which there are now four matching Great Western Trail Argentina. Uh, you have your shearers and stuff in this one. But the fact that you have all those different types of cards, the fact that there are 10 sets of the bonus cards, there's four types of bonus E cards that are always in it and then four more that, that swap out from game to game. The, the amount of combinations that that could create, the amount of variety within your game that that will create uh, is crazy. There's this whole upper board, again, kind of like rail, the Rails of the North for the expansion for Great Wish and Trail, kind of all of that is just downloaded into the base game of this one. Uh, I don't know if either of these ever have plans for expansions or anything, but I'm like, I'm good. I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> like, there's plenty enough in here. Uh, so the fact that you can take your ship around, you can explore up uh, on the various islands near New Zealand uh, is something to consider. All those bonus tiles are something to consider. The types of employees you get and when you get them so you can hopefully get them cheap because there's more shepherds in the employee market is something to consider. There's a Pathfinder track that you can go up to get bonuses. There's gold you can collect so much. There's so many things to uh, manipulate on your board to give yourself permanent certificates and wool and stuff. There is so much in this game. Uh, it's a the biggest, widest sandbox to play in, uh, which I think is really cool and something I really enjoy because I just like it. I just, I want more things to, if it's something I enjoy, I want to have as much stuff to do with it as possible. And this one really uh, provides well. So in terms of the most game, the biggest game, uh, it's gotta be New Zealand. So now moving into some more neutral areas of uh, this video. So there's gonna be a question that people have asked us and uh, uh, are gonna always ask. When you have a series like this, there's gonna be the big question. Do you need each of these games? Do you need to have the complete set for this to work? The answer is simply no. Uh, no one needs any board game. No board game is necessary, uh, first and foremost. So it's not important that you have all three of these. Now, a lot of board gamers are collectors, ourselves included. So am I gonna keep it because I want all three Great Western Trails and their cool art? And you put them all together, the kind of panorama it creates. So I want all those things so I have it all and it looks cool on my shelf? Yes, absolutely. There's kind of like a book library uh, situation with the way you store games that's kind of pretty and awesome. So uh, as board gamers are uh, collectors oftentimes, uh, you're gonna wanna get all three. And I do th think each version adds new exciting stuff to explore, so depending on the day and the mood, maybe I want something more classic. I'll play regular Great Western Trail or I really uh, wanna get really wild <laughs> and do New Zealand uh, or Argentina if I wanna kinda change up the dynamics of the game. Uh, so there's lots of stuff to offer, but do you need all three? No, I'd say you, you would be perfectly fine figuring out which of these three games is best for you and getting that one and you know you're gonna have an awesome game on your hands because Great Western Trail was already fantastic and complete. It's not like Argentina or New Zealand fixes the original, makes it better. It just adds on to, it just, it just riffs on the original. Uh, but no, I don't think you need all three. It's fun to have them all. If you got the cash for it and the will and the want, by all means, I'm not gonna tell you no, but uh, I don't think you need all three. Now here's a question. I've got these three games. I can only bring two with me on my desert island. Which is the one that you can get rid of? 
uh, which is the one you can leave home and not take with you on your cool desert island. Uh, if you're a veteran of Great Western Trail, you've played it a bunch, I'd say this one can go. Whew, go by the wayside and you can keep these two because you already know what's in this box. And also what's in these boxes is built, again, 70% or more of these are simply the original Great Western Trail. You're still always stopping off at buildings, following a pathway, making deliveries. So you're not losing much by getting rid of the original. You're gaining more options and stuff like that. So if you had to get rid of one, I don't know what the scenario is. We're like, you better give me one board game right now or you're gonna get a knuckle sandwich. Uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. But uh, if you had to get rid of one, I'd say the original, but don't do that. Board games have feelings and thoughts and they're real and they speak when you're not in the room. So don't, don't hurt their feelings by getting rid of them. But uh, if you had to, get rid of the original. <laughs> If you're looking at this collection of three games and you're wondering where do I even begin, the answer is still the original. Uh, there are more bells and whistles a lot over here, quite a few over here still, uh, added to the newer versions of Great Western Trail. Uh, I recently taught Great Western Trail Argentina to a, a group and, and it was a long time, a lot of rules overhead. Um, it took a minute to get into. It was a long play and stuff like that. And I realized that like, okay, if we're playing with people who don't know Great Western Trail very well, if you know Great Western Trail really well, you can get into this very quickly because you can just explain the new stuff. But if you don't know Great Western Trail, this really, and again, especially New Zealand, there's a lot of stuff to explain. There's a lot to get through. There's plenty to get through in just the base game. So I would keep it simple teach the original, and then when you go to Argentina and New Zealand, it's gonna be much easier because you have to explain just what things change. And there are plenty of changes, but the whole moving from building to building, people will know the layout of those in the iconography, the general iconography, and be plenty good to go. Uh, so it's a great place to start, and it's the original for a reason. Okay. The final moment is here. The only reason we're watching this video. Which game is the best? Which one is the best of the West? The rest are trash. That's how it works. Only one can win. This one right here, New Zealand, is the winner for me. It officially kills these two games. These games are gone and trash and, in the, and gonna burn in a fire because New Zealand is number one. Um, I'm speaking from a, a place of having played a lot of Great Western Trail in my life. Um, if you're a fan of Great Western Trail, New Zealand <laughs> gives you so many things to explore. All the stuff I was kind of talking about earlier, those bonus tiles uh, and giving you different ways to interact with hazards and stuff. Like, oh my gosh, I can clear these for cheaper. Uh, those, the wild employee is amazing because you do have this market of employees where you might not have any shares come out for a while, but now I have this other option to possibly get that employee that I desperately need. That's really cool. All the deck building cards uh, are amazing for being able to just cycle through that deck quicker, get some bonuses along the way. I love that they incorporated things like that where it's just uh, purely to kind of give you bonuses. This game is bonus Fantastic, and I'm a fan of combos and bonuses in games. So uh, this one gives me the most to munch on. Again, it feels like Great Western Trail and its expansion put into one box. So it gives me so much game, so much variety, just on top of like the, the standard variety that comes in these games, which is pretty great with all the buildings and stuff and which sides you use for which. Uh, I haven't even hardly gotten into that part yet because I've been having so much fun exploring all the different types of cards that can be in your game. Um, yeah, so for me as a, a veteran of, of Great Western Trail, someone who's played a lot, New Zealand is the prettiest game, uh, just because it's set in an environment that's like lush and beautiful and green. Um, it's not because these ones look bad, it's the same artist throughout, and I think they did a great job. This one is so beautiful, all the water and stuff, it just feels very fresh. Um, sheep, come on now. Sheep are cooler than cows, it's fact. Uh, and they do less damage to the planet, so that's cool. <laughs> um, New Zealand is a place that's like special. We're fans of Lord of the Rings here and stuff. There's, there's a lot of things going for it uh, that make this um, really, truly fun. It's not just because it's the newest. That, of course, is a factor. Recency bias is huge. Um, but this one has so much to chew on. So 
much to explore. This one feels truly the most strategically kind of balanced of the games. Uh, you know, Great Western Trail, it kind of feels a little bit like if you don't get some, some amount of cattle cards, it's, you're gonna have a hard time. Here, I haven't ever really gotten that many sheep and I've been just fine in the game by building buildings and doing other things with how I explore the upper boards and build buildings and stuff like that. So it feels the most kind of like truly open sandbox about I'm gonna go this path, this path, this path, or that, and they all are super viable. Um, that's really, really cool. So this one just feels like the final form, right? They've built on and iterated from version to version and refined certain elements. And this one kind of has it all and then just a bunch of variety to boot. So my pick for best of the West is gonna be New Zealand, but that does not take away from either of these two. These are all sticking around with us for a very long time. I will happily play any version of uh, Great Western Trail at any time. It really is that good of a series. Uh, and I think deserves uh, whatever accolades it gets. So uh, that's it for me, y'all. I wanna know in the comments though, for you, if you like Great Western Trail, if you don't like Great Western Trail, <laughs> do any of these seem interesting to you? Have you played them all? What do you think of each version? Which ones speak to you the most? Because I'm just one person with one opinion about three games here, uh, and, and but I'd love to hear from you. Uh, where where for you does, is a sweet spot with Great Western Trail? Hit me in the comments below. And until next time, I'm Mike Murphy. I'm one half the Brothers Murph. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all in the next one.